He's running on his 9-11 leadership, and it was lacking, and there was none. Whenever I hear him talk, I want to scream out to the world and say, God, he's so full of it. As the buck stops at the mayor's office. It goes up to the top. You know, who's in charge here? Mr. Giuliani. But they attacked us in 93. And yet, eight and a half years later, New York City Firefighters, the greatest fire department in the world, we're using the same radios that we knew didn't work. We have remains of dead heroes out of the garbage dump because of Giuliani and his administration. And they're still there today, and they won't remove them. And this guy had politics and his image much more important than the needs of firefighters and their families. I'm a conservative. I'm a member of the NRA. I voted for Giuliani. But in this instance, he messed up. It's about learning who the person running for president is. Don't just go by the image you saw on television. It's not the moral, ethical, or honest person that I feel should be the president of the United States in 2008. This image of Rudy Giuliani as America's mayor uh, is a myth. Rudy Giuliani's urban legend begins on February 26, 1993, when Al-Qaeda terrorists bombed the World Trade Center. It looked like a scene from a Hollywood movie, but it was real. Move back, sir. Over here. I tried to get on radio to transmit to the chief. This is very important stuff. I couldn't get out. I couldn't. I'm calling anybody that could hear me. Nobody responded. A 1994 report confirmed the radios didn't work, and Mayor Giuliani knew it. Yet Rudy and his hand-picked fire commissioner took seven long years to replace the defective radios with new defective radios. This was the first time that I used the new radios that we were issued, and it was at a working fire. At some point in the fire, the second new engine company, who was engine 305, a member on that line was separated from his line and he transmitted a mayday message for a member lost. You know, a guy in a, court, in a cellar of a private house and he's, held, he's calling for, for, for help or giving a mayday and the units that are in the immediate area don't hear him but yet units that are two miles away hear him. Something definitely, definitely wrong with that. Rudy's radios were pulled from service within a week. The city comptroller found that proper testing procedures were never followed and that competitive bidding standards were circumvented with a no-bid contract. He ordered them bogusly, supposed to go out to bid, they're supposed to be tested by the field units, and then they're supposed to give him their input into it, and if they think the radio is good, they would buy it. He didn't do that. You'd have to see how it works in a high-rise, how it works in a tenement, how it works in a cellar, sub-cellar, uh, in tunnels. It would be tested in all these various areas. Uh, my estimation, what happened in, in 2000, 2001, none of that went on. At 9.32 a.m. on September 11, Chief Callan ordered all FDNY members in the North Tower to the lobby. He repeated the command, but not a single company answered. At 9.59, the South Tower collapsed. FDNY's Chief Pfeiffer then repeated the order for all units to evacuate the North Tower. Firefighters had 56 minutes after the first call and 29 minutes after the second order to get out. While all police officers left the building, 121 firefighters never made it out. That day my son was working and they didn't hear the call. 121 guys didn't hear the call in the North Tower to get out. And, they, and the police officers heard it because their radios worked and ours didn't. The South Tower came down in less than an hour and that was the point when the fire department had to say, hey, it's time to get out. They had 29 more minutes to get out of the North Tower. We lost those people for what reason? Because of lack of communication. Not a single cop was lost in that building. Why was that? Because they had gotten the word to get out. Our radios weren't working. Virtually the whole thing goes back to him with the radios. He's the guy on the top, and he's the guy you yell at. He, he takes the hit. And my son is dead because of it. 
That's what firefighters should remember about Rudy Giuliani. He gave us nothing when we needed a life-saving radio. Rather than take responsibility, Giuliani tried to blame the victims, telling the 9-11 Commission that firefighters heard their evacuation orders, but disobeyed them. Their willingness, the way I describe it, to stand their ground. I find that despicable. My son was a Marine. If he had heard the order to evacuate, which he did not because the radios weren't working, if he had heard the order to evacuate, he would have evacuated. That is the most ludicrous statement that I've heard made by some people, that the firefighters disagreed or, or ignored the, uh, the uh, command. Mayor Giuliani twisted the heroism of my brother to suit his own uh, mistakes of that day. The mayor who's claiming to run on 9-11 built his OEM center, his communication center, the basis for all decisions to be made on the site of the World Trade Center that had been attacked just eight years earlier. I mean, he's the one that made the decision to put their bunker in Seven World Trade Center, which I mean, when I was down there on 9-11 that day, I've seen police detectives yelling in the streets that we told him not to put it here, you know, because that was the, the, the target of the terrorists. Seven World Trade Center collapsed at five o'clock that night and the emergency command center was never used that day. Mayor Giuliani was running on the street and he was talking to the media instead of being in a controlled environment making controlled decisions. What? He was the leader of the city running away from the scene, leaving uniformed personnel from fire and police to deal with this tragic situation that was occurring. Firefighters began the difficult task of respectfully recovering the remains of civilians and their fallen brothers. But then gold belonging to the Bank of Nova Scotia was found and removed. Drinks truck spotted at the site. Is that the $200 million in gold? Yes, it is. <laughs> I think we have most of it. I'm not sure we have all of it yet. Within hours of announcing that the gold had been recovered, Rudy pulled FDNY members off the pile, claiming he was worried about their safety. They found the gold, and all of a sudden, everything changed for Rudy Giuliani. Things didn't change for firefighters, but they changed for Rudy Giuliani and said, don't worry, firefighters will believe whatever I tell them. It's about your safety. We knew it wasn't. We knew it was a lie. Once the gold was found, they didn't really care about our membership, you know, that, you know, that they were going to take our, our dead members and put them in the Staten Island dump was a disgrace. It really was. When Rudy started his scoop and dump operation, just 101 FDNY members had been recovered. 242 FDNY members and hundreds of civilians would either stay buried at ground zero or be removed like garbage and deposited at the Fresh Kills landfill. Scoop up the debris, dump it in a landfill, the heck with the fact that it was firefighters or others who would never have a funeral for their family. Families and off-duty firefighters protested Rudy's appalling lack of respect. In response, Giuliani had them arrested. When faced with the public outrage, Mayor Giuliani relented and let FDNY members go back to work on the pile. I lost my son. He was in a Marriott. He was lost when the South Tower came down. We found my son on March 25th, 2002, and if Giuliani had his way, my son's body would have never been recovered because he would have closed the site in November because of money and politics and he wanted the firemen out of there so they could speed up the operation. Remains were found and it was a real relief to find those remains. To, to know, you know, that he wasn't left down there and that he did come home to rest. We have no idea how he died in the towers we haven't recovered his remains, so we don't have any information. Today, we still continue to find remains. We did need radios that worked. We didn't have them. We did need proper respiratory protection. They didn't give it to us. The things that we needed to do our job even better, we didn't have because of his administration. So ultimately, the mayor of New York at the time, Mr. Giuliani, he has to bear these responsibilities. 
And I blame Giuliani. He was the leader that day. And he was the leader for the eight years leading up to that. I wish I could put him on the stand where he'd have to put his hand on the Bible and swear to tell the truth. He's not a leader. He's, not, he's running on 9-11, and it's all a fallacy. That's what this is all about. It's the truth of what he did. And he's making millions, tens of millions of dollars on the backs of my members, as far as I'm concerned. If you're looking for an effective leader, take this country further. Rudy Giuliani is not to be your choice. On the heroic memory of 343 dead firefighters, he wants to run for president of the United States. It's a disgrace.